I think I'm going to just try to wing this little message, but we got a visitor here who's traveled the world and he's worked for NASA. Um, who hasn't he worked with is the question. And what hasn't he done is another question. I mean, even <laughs> went to go climb Mount Everest. He's fascinating and he's an artist. And Gene knew him a long time ago. If you've ever seen the picture of Gene holding up a guy uh, above his head, being lifted up in faith, his name is Jerry Lucas. And Gene said we would have a really good time with him because of his life experiences. And it's absolutely true. His depth of perception and ability to fellowship because of all of his life experiences and going to so many home fellowships probably all over the world, he's, he's made some really deep observations. And it's helped me even to put things together a little more myself about people that lean on their own understanding and walk in the light of their own sparks and make their bed of sorrow, which he's got a pretty clear sound about that. And he actually kind of knows what he got saved from. A lot of people don't. They don't have the bullet points of their own salvation. So they can't have a story to tell. If you can't tell what happened when you leaned on your own understanding and you were self-willed and your confused life where you, you know, created a lot of Ishmaels and hid your father's idols under your tent and it caused great death. There is a way that seems right to a man. The end of that way is death. You know, it's hard for our life to even have any value if we don't have a testimony and we can't give anybody else a clear sound about why life is better when you understand princes and powers and rulers and you're not in a people battle anymore and you can start overcoming because you're not saying anymore that you're not wretched, naked, blind, poor, and miserable. You realize leaning on your own understanding and living in the vanity of your mind and having your foolish heart to darken because you're alienated from the life of God because there's no light in you because you walk in the light of your own sparks and tell the voice inside of you, the Holy Spirit, to sit down and be quiet. And, you know, uh, life doesn't go too well and we should be able to explain to others why life is great when you pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow Jesus. That's why I've had some interaction. This guy's had a lot of Jewish background too. And I, I've, I've had some inter, um, international relationships too with some Jews. And, you know, when they get saved from the law, these people come alive. Oh, you mean we can walk after the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus and love? And so Jesus said a really profound thing in John 17. You know, our salvation is to know and be known by him. It's John 17, 3. It's what it's all about. He came to save us from the dimension of all of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Because it's just hell on earth. And, and there's a kid's book that talks about that hell. It's kind of funny because he's designed things even for the guy in the movie, Rudy. He spent, you know, he spent uh, a whole week with Rudy helping him out. And... He also did a, sorry, I have little deers down here making noises. Um, he did a, a picture for Ronald Reagan. So he's he's done a lot of, it's all, it's all his list is too long to list. But in a sense, because he's been kind of like Solomon and he's tried it all, you know, he sees the futility and the vanity of life and what really matters. And I've had a lot of good fellowship with him and so has Gene. It's been so deep because there's a really deep principle where Jesus said, if if they receive you, they'll receive me and receive him who sent me. And and then he says, you know, oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I would have gathered you as weeping, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't receive the one sent to you. I had to receive all the people in my past because they all had a story to tell me. And people don't receive each other very well. They don't understand their parents' demise in the kingdom of prince and powers and rulers. And they, they don't understand what their parents did wrong in living in a dimension of the law that kills, the pointing of the finger, the, the examining the log in everybody else's eye, the law that kills versus the kingdom of love. 
And what Jean has in common with this friend Jerry is they, they were exposed to some really deep Bible teaching, but there was, there was some fallacies too. I mean, when you have to call somebody because you're gonna spend 25 cents, there's a problem there. So <laughs> there was things that went south and it's, it's really funny because all the, he was with a bunch of people that, you know, they were pastors, they were leaders. <laughs> it was leaders from all over the world in this organization. But he said, you know, that fool that jumps on the motorcycle will probably be the only one that rises from the ashes. And he's kind of seen that that's true. What happens when you, when you do well and take it patiently and so we've had some really deep conversations about some key principles of truth. And one of them I saw early on when I met Jean at the Pearl of Great Price, selling everything for the Pearl. Um, until we get to the place where loving the Lord with all of our heart and mind and strength and, and caring about how we go in and out of the hearts of other people we can't really get anywhere. And that's why there's a lot of miserable Christians. And again, Jesus put it this way, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees and hypocrites, you're not even going to enter the kingdom. And what was their righteousness? They were trying to, they grieved, denied, and resisted the Holy Ghost, the kingdom of love, the voice of love. That's what they did. They crucified Jesus. They crucified the innocent and put him under the law. So the law kills and, and you know, Isaiah 51 talks about how you can ride the low places of the earth or the high places. And Isaiah 58, and so does, uh, well, Matthew chapter 5. There's another one I was thinking of. Um, I lost it, though. Anyway, you know, it's been so refreshing to be around him because I was telling him some really deep principles of truth I learned early on, you know unless we're really willing to follow peace and holiness with people and we stop blaming people in a spiritual war, we can't even see. And most people are just pissed off and ticked off and angry and offended. They live from offense to offense, not faith to faith. Every day is a new, a day to get offended with people in a spiritual battle. And one of my friends used a scripture that changed your life. You know, if you despise men, you despise God. So what if everybody that's ever come into our life has a message to teach us dimensionally about the war in the heavenlies between the kingdom of selfishness and the kingdom of love and the kingdom of the law and the kingdom of love. And can the eye say to the hand, I don't need you. So his, his depth of perception and the things he said are absolutely profound. I think he really understands what he's seeing is people that actually have the faith to love. You know, a lot of us are at that place now to where we actually will put away lying and stop being cunning and crafty thinking and acting and speaking like, baby, that just wants my toys and my food and play. And I'm gonna get ticked off at everybody that messes with my food and my toys and my play. Pleasure seekers that live for pleasure more than God. And, and that's one of the things that came to me. I mean, nobody wants a half-hearted lover. Most of the women I've ever met have been totally offended and bitter and gone the way of offenses because of their unfaithful boyfriends and their unfaithful husbands, not realizing how unfaithful they were to the Lord. So they're bitter, 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 vengeful. I've heard some stories lately. Hmm. <laughs> and I've... I have really all through time. I mean, even before I met Jean, women laying in a truck all night with a knife pointed up, you know, a woman, you know, shooting her husband, her, her adulterous affair with a husband down the road as he's running. I, I've heard it all. I've, I've heard a lot of stories about uh, women. What is it? So hell hath no fury like a woman who's been forsaken. And most of those women don't take a time to really think about how they run off with their lovers. So I think I'm going to end it with this because when we lean on our own understanding, we are stuck in a people battle. And a lot of people, you, you can't even reach their heart because everything is calculated through their own understanding, not their heart, love, spiritual perception. 
and everything is about safe places, zones. I mean, look at the world we're living in. Bars of the castle. I don't feel safe. I don't feel comfortable. So, you know, if you're not really willing to hang in there with conflict either, we were talking about how just treacherous the spirit of indifference is. It's, it's such a murderous spirit. We're indifferent to the Lord. We're indifferent to people. You know what we're indifferent to is the dialogue that goes on in our head. And I've made so many videos, and, and Jean's been talking about this for years, about the you can't eat at the table of God and drink from his cup and the table of the devils. So people, most people don't even know when the accuser and the slanderer is giving them little thoughts, right? To create divisions and schisms and evil imaginations because they can't understand what that person is doing that's messing with my unhappiness, right? So there's no washing feet, forget that. There's no loosing bounds of wickedness. There's only pointing the finger. How dare you mess with my happiness? And you know, that's why Isaiah 58, I refer, I refer to it all the time. Because it's how to ride the high places and how to ride the low places. And everything about God is love. And God has poured out his love over all mankind in the fact that he's merciful and his mercies are new every morning. But there's a recipe to get his mercy. The rich man that walked up to Jesus that had all of his other lovers, uh, went away empty. And so I've known myself and a lot of women for a lot of years, a lot of them. And some of those women actually got to the place where they were willing to throw it all away for buying the pearl. And I met a lady and she, it's, it, what's really incredible about this story is I didn't know Jean very well. And these two people came up to an altar. There's probably 150 people there. Two people randomly and a crowd of a bunch of people that nobody knew. And Jean says, are you guys married to each other? <laughs> are you having an affair? I mean, how does even somebody see that? And you know, I, I ended up telling this lady that Jesus isn't a bar fly. He doesn't want to be number two on the list. He doesn't want to be number five and he doesn't want to be number 10. And, and that's what's really sad because you can't find mercy until you seek the Lord with all your heart, you'll be found by him. You'll find his mercy. And when you're wholehearted and sincere, you know, so I've watched some people that have known Gene 40 years that have never found mercy. And I was thinking about that. I read all kinds of scriptures about it last night that there really is a recipe for baking the cake. And it is true honesty and sincerity about the shipwreck to people's lives that goes on when you're, they're pleasure seekers. Everything evil that's going on in the world today is because people love pleasure more than God, so they can't love their brother. And it's all a tragedy from there. And most women don't see, you know, their fangs in the past, their claws in the past, their teeth in the past, their selfishness. So it's really hard when you have an ounce of self-justification for why you took somebody down and blaming them for taking you down. And you know, that's one thing I, that's really come to me lately too, is the spirit that's at work in the children of disobedience. When people don't care about the war between the flesh and the spirit and the war between the happy place and the look at this deer looking at me. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. <laughs> you want me to give you some nuts? <laughs> there was a few of them out here. We have a water trough, so <laughs> sometimes there's 24 of them coming up here for a drink of water, and now there's a bunch of turkeys. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, maybe I can give you some nuts in just a minute. So, <laughs> anyway, I have these little deer pellets too, so they come for these little round deer pellets we buy for probably horses. Anyway, um, there's a spirit at work in the children of disobedience. And one scripture puts it like this, they wear out the saints. So when you think of God's whole motive and intention that Jesus Christ came to reveal in John 17, that you would know and be known by God. John 17, three describes the operation of God. And so does Hebrews 12, that he's gonna shake everything that can be shaken. He's gonna shake your self life. 
so you can become pure in heart because the pure in heart see God. So if we blame people for shaking us, we're not going to go too far. And, you know, I was actually reading scriptures about, you know, there's, there's four scriptures about the operation of God and the work of his hands. And if we embrace that, we'll grow up. And if we don't, we'll stay babies and probably get more bitter and offended. And there's also the operation of the devil, though. And I was surprised at how many people I found talking about the operation of darkness. And, you know, Jesus said, um, God forgive them, they don't know what they, they're doing. So most people don't intend to marry a man and kill, steal, and destroy his life, right? And they might not even see how they were used to do that. But the truth is, a lot of women do it. That's what's really, really sad, is that they don't even know what they're doing. They have absolutely no clue. That kind of looks like a little lamb in the sky or something, I don't know. Um, that's what's really sad. Most people stuck in a, in a carnal battle can't see spiritually. They can't name a spirit. They can't name the spirits their parents were plagued by. They can't even repent of the spirit of humanism, man's wisdom. I mean, I walked and prayed for three hours one day just repenting for leaning on my own understanding and exalting man's opinion and man's words instead of God's. If we don't understand the demise of our parents and if we don't understand the demise of our own life, as far as making a seat for a, a demonic spirit, idolatry with men, you know, um, anger, malice, hatred, you name the spirit. So bitterness is probably the worst. And so is flattery. Flattery and bitterness are two of the most wicked spirits there is because people really, really deceive themselves that they're full of love and they're full of mercy and they're well, while they hide hatred with lying lips. And again, it's interesting how when people are pressurized, their list against you will, will come out. And, you know, I'm, I've never really understood the scripture that says they wear out the saints like I have recently because of that spirit. People that don't care if their thoughts please God, if their words please God, are not going to taste their words, and they're not going to care if demons are talking to them in their head. So it's all going to play out really bad. They can only be used to take people down and they don't even know they're doing it because they flatter themselves in their own conceit while they love the power of a wrong spirit. And they don't have holy communion. They have communion with devils and don't even know that they're advancing the kingdom of darkness, which that's the devil's operation is to make sure that we get shut down from advancing God's kingdom that we get shut down, that our lips get shut, that we get sick, weak, and we go to sleep, that we don't take ground for the one whose words are spirit and life that comes to heal and deliver us and free us from the hand of the enemy so we can live without fear and bondage. And that's what's so cool is, is uh, Jerry's perception spiritually and his ability to have input in that because of his world travels and all of his ministry experiences has been a true delight. It's been a refreshing spring, actually. And uh, I just wanted to talk about these things a little that have been going on lately. And I uh, just pray that if you're listening to this, that you would search for the Lord with all your heart because you'll be found by him. And if you tell the Lord the real truth, you'll find mercy. If you only tell him 95%, 50%. We have to own our selfish past where we exalted man's wisdom and just took people out. And there's a lot of people that just can't do that. And that's how the devil seals their lips shut. They couldn't make sense of a testimony. They don't even know what they were delivered from because they're not. And you know, we, we were not, that's not the normal Christian life to never be able to give a testimony and make a clear sound about what Jesus saved you from. And I pray if you're one of those people that God help you find mercy and God help you use your mouth to, to do this. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. What a waste of time that you can't help somebody become wise and that you've used everybody that you know to make you wise, but you don't care about turning around and loving them. That's the worst condition people can be in is the righteousness of the Pharisees. Amen.